No, I've got some, uh, hand these out. Most of you have got some little marks on your board already. Th these, these are marking pencils that wash off. And so if your board doesn't have any marks on it, you can go ahead and mark it. Uh, you don't have to mark it as pronounced as some of these are. <laughs> now somebody knows how, more than me. I got a little knife here. That'll probably work. I was going to use my teeth, but that's probably, since I'm being filmed, uh, it's probably not a sanitary thing to do. Uh, and of course, this could be construed as a weapon, you know. I actually got thrown out of a concert with that. The rest oh, of people, my. the rest of people were in chains. I made the mistake. How many people like Hank Williams, the original Hank Williams? Oh, hey, our little town in Napa Vine. We had Hank Williams the third. Said he's going to sing like his grandpa did. I oh, boy, this is wonderful. Hank Williams III, and he's coming right to our little town. Hey, he's a punk rocker. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. And uh, they had a motorcycle gang that was enforcing security for the concert. <laughs> and I walked in and made the mistake. I could have cleaned my thumbnail, and I managed to flash this. I was pulled off and detained like a terrorist at the airport. It may have set off an explosive device in the plane. And the rest of these folks are walking around with chains hanging off of them and metal studs on their wrists. And, and I'm a danger. It's the beard. Oh, man, I'll tell you. Well, hopefully this won't end up the same way as that did. <laughs> But if you'd like one of these and you'd like to mark on your board, use that because it will wash off. So there's one there. Some of them are pretty well marked up already. How are we over here? Are you you're okay? So how do we mark these? Well, you can do it this uh, you can do it this way if you want. You can either you can remember if you can remember that the the non-dealer's position holes are just one quicker. In other words, if you're looking here at the dealer, the dealer is on par. That's what we call this, like in a golf game. The dealer is on par to win at the end of deal one with seven. The non-dealer is on par to win with 17. So you look at these over here, they're exactly 10 more, one hand quicker. In other words, what we show on four here for the dealer, if the non-dealer wants to take the advantage away, needs to happen one hand sooner. At the end of four deals, end of three deals, so on. But you see the progression, 10, 16, 10, 16, 10, 16, 10, 16, 10, 16, 10, so on, so on down. Because of what we talked about earlier. So these, these are the power holes. Now next week we're going to go to critical position zones. And it's, it's a different concept, but similar. If you were going to mark your board for both of these, if, you, if you've got a pretty quick mind, you might be able to see the relationship between these and just put down this, this set here and recognize if you want to steal the dealer's advantage, then uh, as a non-dealer, I want to be at 95 at the end of 7. See what I mean about speeding up the game? I want to speed up the game. And the dealer wants to slow down the game because this is what's going to happen if the dealer slows it down. They're going to win.
Before we get too far along, I want you to look at the back of 7-5. There's a, there's a chart on the back of 7-5 seven, seven that shows what's, what are the chances of holding the dealer to a certain number of points, what are the chances of holding the non-dealer to a certain number of points, Pretty good idea to have a vague idea of what those numbers are. For instance, if your opponent is counting first and needs 14 points, what are the chances they'll have 14? It tells you on there the odds of the non dealer scoring 14, 5 to 1. So there's four chances in five, they can't do it. That might affect how you play. Five chances out of six. One in five, twenty percent. Five to one. No, five to one. Five. Okay. Yeah. So you got six. You got six chances possible, and five of them are not good. Uh, that could change your disposition entirely. I hear so many people say when their opponent's thirteen or fourteen out. Oh, man, they got this. No, they don't. But your believing they've got it increases the chances they will. <laughs> Believe that they don't have it. The, ch the chance is better for you to win by a long shot if you're anywhere near them on the board than it is when they're needing 14. And notice 9 or 10 is only 50-50. I mean, when you're looking at 9 or 10, it's 50-50. So that means there are just as many chances I can't get out as I can. Well, there comes a point probably at the end of the game where it's pretty certain your opponent might score and get out. If they're counting first and need four, what's the chances? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four to the one, yeah. Probably is one, one, one out of 15. One out of 15, they won't get four. Knowing that might cause you to try to peg out. Okay. So get get a feel for some of some of these numbers, and they, because they can, especially in the end game situation, you can be psych, psyched into believing you've lost the game, when in fact the odds are with you pretty heavily. So.